Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui avec les ministres Mendicino et Blair. Pour commencer, j'aimerais remercier l'ancien gouverneur général David Johnston de nous avoir rapidement remis son premier rapport sur l'ingérence étrangère. En mars, il a commencé son examen indépendant pour évaluer l'étendue et l'effet de l'ingérence étrangère dans les élections canadiennes et pour fournir des recommandations afin que le Canada puisse mieux protéger sa démocratie. Le mandat comprenait des recommandations sur les mécanismes et processus nécessaires pour que le Canada puisse combattre efficacement l'ingérence étrangère et pour que les Canadiens puissent garder confiance dans leurs élections et leurs institutions démocratiques. Nous accueillons favorablement le rapport d'aujourd'hui et ses recommandations. Understandably, Canadians have had many questions over the last few months, and that is why we launched this process. The former Governor General has reviewed thousands of pages of classified and unclassified documents. While preparing his report, Mr. Johnston was given complete access to, all re to any relevant records and documents from across government. I myself welcomed the opportunity to sit down with him, as did other ministers. He also interviewed senior officials, security experts, and many others. The work has led him to conclude that, and I quote, the elections of 2019 and 2021 were well protected by sophisticated mechanisms and there is no basis to lack confidence in their results. Le rapport réitère de manière indépendante et impartiale que les deux dernières élections au Canada ont été libres et équitables et que les résultats ont représenté la volonté des Canadiens. Selon le rapport, il n'y a aucune indication que la classe politique était en défaut d'agir sur des renseignements, des conseils ou des recommandations. Toutefois, le rapport indique que l'ingérence étrangère représente une menace grave et il contient plusieurs recommandations sur les processus visant à détecter, à dissuader et à contrer les tentatives d'ingérence et à mieux gérer la circulation d'informations au sein de la fonction publique. Nous acceptons ces recommandations. L'ancien gouverneur général a déterminé que la prochaine étape de son travail consistera à tenir des audiences publiques. Nous soutenons ce travail sans réserve, y compris l'intention du gouverneur général de créer un dialogue avec les Canadiens, en particulier ceux issus des communautés de la diaspora qui sont souvent la cible de tentatives d'ingérence. Ce travail est essentiel pour l'élaboration de son rapport final. Conformément aux recommandations, L'OSSNR et le CPSNR examineront la partie confidentielle de ce rapport afin qu'ils puissent fournir leur propre évaluation. Letters have been sent to opposition leaders offering security clearances so that they may receive the relevant intelligence. I think everyone can agree with the former Governor General's assessment that all leaders must work from a common understanding of true facts. Mr. Johnson also recognized that more work must be done to address the shortcomings in the flow of security information from the public service to the political level. Our government will always protect the integrity of Canada's democracy and stand up to foreign attempts to interfere with it. And this is a duty our government has dedicated ourselves to since day one. In fact, In 2015, we ran on a promise to bring in oversight of our national security agencies by parliamentarians from all parties, something the previous government had staunchly refused to do, and we did that. The work to counter foreign interference needs to constantly innovate and evolve, especially in a world where interference by other countries in our democracy is more frequent and increasingly sophisticated. Just look at how easy it has been for bad actors to create and disseminate misinformation and disinformation online. And that's merely one example. I just got back from the G7 where we talked about this at length. The illegal invasion of Ukraine and rising authoritarianism were much discussed. And countries there, including non-G7 nations like South Korea and Australia, are facing threats to their democracies. 
foreign interference is not new. And it doesn't just target our elections. It targets all aspects of society, our research institutes and universities, our businesses, and most commonly, the diverse communities that enrich our country. Canada is not alone in this. It has happened in elections in the United States, in France, in Germany, and in the Brexit referendum, among others. At the G7, one of the things we discussed was the rapid response mechanism that Canada introduced when we hosted in 2018 so that we could all strengthen our response to diverse and evolving threats to democracy. We will never tolerate foreign interference. Notre gouvernement continuera toujours de protéger l'intégrité de la démocratie au Canada et de la défendre contre les tentatives d'ingérence étrangère. Il s'agit du devoir de tous les leaders politiques et de tous les parlementaires et de tous les citoyens. Nous devons faire honneur à notre démocratie, lutter activement contre la désinformation et la mésinformation, ainsi qu'assurer l'intégrité des institutions démocratiques du Canada, notamment nos élections. Au Canada, la démocratie est forte et stable. Si ça ne plaît pas aux dictateurs et aux régimes autoritaires, bien tant pis. La démocratie, c'est le choix que la population canadienne a fait lors de chacune des 44 élections fédérales tenues depuis 1867. C'est un privilège qui nous est cher et qui est au cœur de notre identité à titre de Canadien. People from around the world move to Canada with the dream of one day having citizenship and with it the right to cast a ballot and maybe even to step up and put their own name on a ballot, because in Canada, we have the right to choose our own future. Every one of us has a responsibility to stand up for our democracy, and undermining it for political gain is wrong and damaging. Rigorous debate is a pillar of democracy, absolutely. So is interrogating our institutions and holding all elements of government to account, but democracy is not a game. There are lines we must not cross. We must never play into the hands of those overseas or at home who want us to lose faith in our democratic institutions. These institutions have stood strong for over a century and a half, but they require our constant attention. Democracy didn't happen by accident, and it won't continue without effort. And as the report says, democracy is built on trust. Trust in the processes that elect people to serve and trust in the people who hold that responsibility. To lead is to choose. And responsible leadership requires us to take action that reaffirms Canadians' trust in our democracy. That's how we face the scale of the challenges that lie before us. Meeting this moment requires all of us to choose to strengthen trust. This is what Canadians deserve. This is what our government is committed to do. Once again, I want to thank the Governor General for his work.